Sugar has various different forms and the body can even be fooled into thinking that various different chemicals are indeed sugars themselves. What are these sugars and what role does it play? Well, the most common form of sugar is sucrose, the kind that you spoon into your tea or coffee. Inside the human body it separates into fructose and glucose. Fructose is known as fruit sugar, which is found in honey and also present in many fruits and vegetables is sweeter than other forms of sugar. Glucose, which is sometimes also called dextrose, is the plant sugar. It's made directly from photosynthesis as used by all cells as an energy source. Other sugars include maltose, which is found in some grains like barley, and lactose, which is found in milk. All of these sugars are chains of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, or a carbohydrate, and they act like similar chains in petrol and they fuel reactions within the body. It's because of this link with sugar and energy, most people find it easy to understand that's led to sugars being linked to hyperactivity in children. However, in fact, there is absolutely no link between the consumption of sugars and periods of hyperactivity. Instead, there are two explanations for this perceived link. Firstly, is selective perception, in that each time a child is running around after having consumed something sugary, the parent notices, and yet ignores the times that the child does exactly the same thing, then sits down and reads a book. The other is that the child, instead of reacting to consuming the sugar, is reacting to the parent's reaction that the child has consumed sugar. Now this isn't to say that too much sugar in the diet isn't unhealthy. It can lead to obesity, diabetes and heart disease. However, this means, like other food-related health problems, a balanced diet, the right amount of exercise, minimise all of these risks. However, you want to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, and yet keep that sweet taste which you really like, there are some alternatives out there. These artificial sweeteners include aspartame, saccharin, stevia and sucralose. These have been many scares about these substitutes and others. However, most of these have proved totally groundless and warning notices or even outright bans on these substances have mostly been removed. Some of these are probably down to competition worries rather than any genuine health concerns and whilst consuming very large portions of these substitutes may actually con constitute a risk, it would be less of a risk than consuming the same amount of sugar to attain a similar amount of sweetness. The reason for different uses of the different types of sweetness is generally down to their reaction either when heated or a slight arbor aftertaste if some of them are mixed with different types of foods, but their widespread use is likely to continue in many foods. Currently, with the recent drop in oil prices, there has actually been a reduction in the amount of sugar being converted into ethanol as a fuel, meaning there is now a surplus of cheap sugar out in the world. Whether this will lead to a direct impact on consumption and then on health has yet to be seen, but sugar will continue to be a part of the diet many, many years to come.